What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're going to be checking out a game called The Council, which is a narrative RPG. It's like a conversational RPG. That's the best way that I know how to describe it to you as a viewer. And so like you level up, you gain conversational skills so that you can steer conversations in the direction that you want. You have like battles of will and logic and stuff like that. Very, very interesting title and something that I had pondered about a year ago. I had actually I had thought of something just like this about a year ago and wondered why it hadn't been made yet and turns out it was in development and it, it is made now. And so we're going to check the game on out, see what it has going for it. Uh, we're going to start a new game here. I am going to be on episode one. And so I figure we'll hit the prologue, I guess. I don't know. Seems like where we're going to start from. New game! Get ready for a lot of conversation though. Get ready for it because it's coming. It's not just dope telescopes and whatnot. It's conversation all day long. You're not getting anywhere with this von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh. That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair on my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling it at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Ugh. Ugh. Stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. <sighs> With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational. And open. I got it. I've opened the shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchardt. Von Borchardt. Hmm? Listen, let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. So we can either choose to act, or we can choose to trust our mother. I am going to... Eh. Let's act. I mean, we gotta be a man of action, right? Let's bust this dude's head. God's sake, Louis. I told you to let me do it. Let me see. Uh, you know, I was in control of the situation, Mother. Oh, tell that to your nose. <gasps> it's because of this kind of reaction that I prefer to work alone. You ought to learn to trust me, Mother. You know, can't you be happy for once? I finally, we finally cracked the Von Borchardt case. 
He was just a middleman. He would have been more useful alive. <sighs> How many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. You're much more important than you can ever imagine. Right, let's go now. See, I got to shoot a guy because I didn't trust my mother. Don't take your guns to town, son. Don't take your guns to town. I took that gun to town all over his belly region. Just bow! Let him have it. Well done, Mother. You just had to pick up Bob Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer? And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost oh, mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Hall, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you, good sir, what brings you here? I have business with Lord Mortimer as well, random people that I just ran into on a dock. How's it going? Yes. Uh, I think it's probably the 1700s or something, but I'm wearing a tie like it's the 1800s. I'm ahead of the curve. Don't hate on me. Lord Mortimer asked me to join him. We have some business to take care of. Oh, how mysterious. You adapt quickly, my son. You get along here like a fish in water. Would you believe that we are all here hoping to solve our personal issues? You'll see. Right. I doubt that you came here to look for your mother, your eminence. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man, because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island, and only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. I... I'm going to turn the question back over to the Duchess because I don't want to give myself away. I did want to point out that this plays out very, very differently. So this is one of those games where simple choices that you make, they will change the outcome of the entire game and, like, what occurs. So, for example, uh, when I played through this game to test it out, learn the controls, and figure out what the game was so that I could properly explain it to all of you in an impressions video a little bit later, I chose to trust my mother in the opening sequence. Uh, we did not get this scar. We got a completely different trait. Uh, our mother told us that she was going here, and then, like, we were well aware of her plans to come here. This time around, I did not trust her, and so now we have the scar, and she chose not to trust us with the information that she was coming to the island, and we were written to by the lord of the island, which happens either way, but it changes the relationship that you have with your mother. Uh, she doesn't trust us because we don't trust her. And so small decisions in this game can have big outcomes on the way other players in the game, in terms of, like, you know, this lady or that guy players... Uh, the way that they perceive you and the way that they act. And so simple conversational choices can very much change what ends up happening as you go through the game. And you, Duchess? 
You seem to be quite accustomed to things here. Am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right. This is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A Duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Ah! Are you all right? Mother? Oh shit, your hand! So? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah, no one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to no, do. No, Mother, don't, don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There's no other way. If you... if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But... I trusted you. No, sir! Don't! No! No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay for it. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't Why don't you just go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. I definitely have to find Mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. See, that's why I don't have house parties at my house. Because there's always some dude that wants to show up all scarred up and bleeding out of his nose and mouth at my house. And then it's all awkward and everybody's like, hey, yo, why is this guy bleeding all over the place? And you're like, I don't know. I just got here. And then they're like, but it's your party. Shouldn't you have been there the whole time? That's a little suspicious. And I'm like, yo, what are you trying to suggest right now? And they're like, I'm just saying, I think that you shot him. And see, don't have a house party. You'll get blamed for shooting somebody. That's, that's the moral of the story right now that I'm trying to give to you all. So that you can make better decisions in your lives. I mean, got some letters over here. Can't really do anything with that. It'll light up stuff that we're able to pick up. And so, there's one right there, for example. Oh, never mind. Cutscene! Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you. But we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? Uh, we can either be a diplomat, and so they shine in society. It's a talented speaker who avoids faux pas and can convince those with whom he is talking without offending them. Politics is his field of predilection, so it's politics, etiquette, linguistics, conviction, and diversion. And we can be an occultist. So the occultist is a master of deception. Convinced of the importance of knowledge, he has acquired extensive expertise in the science and the arts. Using others to achieve his own ends does not bother him. Manipulation, occultism, erudition, scientists, and subterfuges. Uh, we also have detective, 
The detective excels in investigation. He is trained to notice every detail in his surroundings as well as in people he questions. A hands-on man, he does not shy away from the direct approach. So that's questioning, vigilance, psychology, agility, and logic. I'm going to go with the one that gives me the best chance of having Harry Potter magic. So there it is. I can almost have Harry Potter magic. Uh, I have one point, apparently, in conviction. I'm kind of wondering what Scarred does, because if you trust your mother, you end up with psychology, and you get a free level up in it. And so it's kind of an interesting thing to think about. We started with one manipulation right there. Uh, we have science. We have occultism. We have erudition. And so we have, I guess, up-to-date with scientific knowledge and medical techniques. We have myths, occult, and religious symbols, as well as ancient languages and secret societies. We have discreetly stealing items, picking locks, and noticing falsifications. And then we also have manipulation over on this side, which is getting people to act in your interest. I think what I'll probably do is let's put a bunch into... I don't know if it's better off to focus on one skill right now, or if it's a better idea. Apparently, I can just put a whole bunch of points in there, too. I guess we're not limited in what we can increase our points by. Uh, it takes us three points to hit level one. It takes us a number of other points to hit level two, four, I think. And then I think it takes ten to hit level three. And by that point, you're pretty good at that skill. You're fairly solid at it. But we have level one and everything down here. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to push manipulation up to level two. So we are now a level two manipulator. Oh, uh, yeah. We're really good at just kind of steering people in the direction we want them to go. I have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priest stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Nope, not even a tiny little bit. I could try to fabricate a lie right now, but my general instinct as a dude is that, you know, women tend to sniff out lies. It tends to happen, so just fess up to it now and just be like, you know what, I, uh, I don't know. Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm, I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Boo! Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No, sorry. I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? I am so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. Opportunities. And so what's going to happen is every now and again in cutscenes, there's going to be little things you can click on, and they add to your investigation about a person. So you might notice a necklace they're wearing, and you might notice, like, the rouge that a woman is wearing, and you might recognize it. And that information will go back later so that if you ever get conflicting information or somebody tries to lie to you in one of the conversational battles that this game has... Uh, you'll be able to catch them in it, and if you catch them off guard, it means that your abilities cost less, and you can advance the intrigue that you want uh, at much less, I guess, energy loss to yourself. No doubt you saw the little pips, those little squares right there that are on screen right now. Those are effort points, and every time you do something like manipulate somebody or use logic on them or quote science on them, it's going to cost you effort points. But if you catch them off guard, it costs less points, or you can even restore your own points, which makes your chapter's investigation easier. So it's a good idea to notice things in cutscenes. It's a really good idea. So we've got her lips right there. I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? 
So, each person you meet on the island has their own personality, which makes them vulnerable to certain skills and immune to others. Exploiting their personality is crucial to achieve your personal goals. Skills used against immunities will not succeed and leave you exhausted. Meanwhile, exploited vulnerabilities will give you effort points back. And so, if you wanted to look at somebody's Emily vulnerabilities, we can do that right there. And so, if we go to Emily Hillsborough... Uh, she is immune to logic, apparently. That sounds a bit more like an insult than I, I would like to admit, but, you know, she's immune to logic. What can you do? You try, but it's just like talking to somebody on a forum. They're never going to listen. They've already made up their mind. Logic doesn't matter. Answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily, but you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision... You don't have much of a place in her heart. Well, I mean, what I took from that vision is that she was more of a loose end. Like, it wasn't like a I want to kill you type thing. It was like, I, I have to kill you because you're the only person that knows this secret that I know. And I trust me, but I can't trust you. We got like a prisoner's dilemma thing going on here right now. And the only way to keep a secret between three men is with two caskets. That's it. All right, so let's have a look around the dock here. Sitting on the dock of the bay, watching my tears leave All right, so we got royal jelly right there. That's a consumable item that we can use in order to get effort points back. It's not like rare, but it's not like common either. Use them when you're desperate would be my recommendation to you. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet. Delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Uh, what do you know about the investigation would be the way that I would do it. I mean, that's why I came here, so I'm going to start, like, I'm going to start patting people down about as soon as possible. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since Sarah's mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But sir, may rest assured, we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that sir's mother may be hiding on the island, and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. What do you mean? On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps sir's mother was here. All right. Your skills give you access to unique choices and actions at the cost of effort points. The higher your skill level, the lower the cost is in points. I don't have questioning, though, so I can't really do that one. So we're going to have to go with, are there any witnesses? Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of Sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll on the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Okay. I can... Oh, really? It's difficulty zero to manipulate him. Last time I played around, uh, it cost a ton for me to ma manipulate him right here, and it used up my points, which really affected the rest of my playthrough. So putting in that second level to manipulation actually is going to help out tremendously as we move forward. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but, sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. 
Here you are. It is indeed your handkerchief, Mother. He must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? Yeah, let's go walk around and see what we can find here. So on the wharf, uh, we've got a piece of something over here, like a stick or a caber, or That's what is that? Incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. So we have this stick. Looks like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contract, I put my money on cannon powder. Yeah, take the bar with you. This might just come in handy. You never know when you're going to need a big-ass pipe. Like, we might need to smash somebody in the head, or we might meet some ladies. You just never know. A sack of seeds. It's a big old think. sack of seeds. No seems to have used any. We've got a barrel. It's like the barrel's been broken for quite some time. Alright, is there anything back down this way? Some rope. Apparently no one's touched it for a good long time. Alright, so the rope has not been fiddled with. We also, he said that he found the handkerchief down here. I'm guessing that she was looking inside the mailbox. Let's see what's hidden inside. Um, I could find a clue if I had higher logic. Unfortunately, I do not have logic. Let's look. Now we have to Mr. Carl Corey. It's too badly written. I, I can't make out the address. Okay. Uh, Galbraith? The address is 50 Bedford Square, London. And Mr. Joaquina da Silva. The address is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me. It's about time the order sent some envoys there. There's an envelope with ideograms. Hmm. A letter written in an oriental language. I don't know that. I guess we gotta have linguistics in order for that to work. I have the slightest idea what it says. Alright. Other letters? Probably a Dutchman. Yeah, I mean... Okay. Ah, occultism level one. The name rings a bell. Samuel Ritter Dochoa. <laughs> Mother, you test me even when you're not here. It's an anagram of Louis Moras de Richet. You wanted to write to me then. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richet. What is your game here, Mother? What are these strange turns of phrase? never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name. Okay. But here you go even further by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think. Godoy, Godoy. Manuel Godoy. Why does that name sound so familiar? Oh, I don't have politics. I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. Yeah, it sure seems like it. Uh, my name is Splattercat. This game is called The Council. A politically charged, historical, conversational RPG from the people over at Focus Home Interactive and uh, their associated development teams. I will see you all next time. I'm not quite sure about this game just yet, so I think we're going to play a little bit more. I'll probably have another episode for it. If you like this video, give it a like. It only takes a second and it helps the channel out more than you know. 
Uh, my name is Splattercat. If you're new here, I show off indie games every single day here on the internet. I'm not sure this one quite qualifies, but it was a weird title, and I do like weird titles as well, so I figured I would show it off. If you wanted to join me live, you can do that at Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming every day at 3 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time, because Daylight Savings Time is currently wrecking everything. And then, of course, if you wanted to shout at me on Twitter, you can do that. Twitter.com slash Splattercat Games. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for stopping on in, and hi-do, everybody.